I am a self-sufficient RuneScape player. One of, if not the first, to have created a self-sufficiency goals and achievements thread. My goals, alongside with playing self-sufficiently, are to maximize profit from all 99s or 120s and to obtain all the best gear. I am Metzomaniac9 and this is my progress series. Hey dear viewer, on the last video, someone that goes by the name of Alex... Man, what a tough last name. Well, it must be legit. I wonder what country that's from. Anyway, I'm just going to call him Alex. So basically, Alex left a quite disturbing comment on my last episode. It turns out that he has killed Araxi 1313 times, and in those kills, he got 22 legs. So let's compare that to me for a second. I have 1475 Araxi kills and 8 legs. I mean, he almost has triple the amount of legs that I do. When the difference is that big, then our luck must be on the opposite side of the spectrum. And now that I think about it, I got 8 legs from Araxi. And how many legs does the spider have? Yeah. Eight. So Araxi shouldn't be able to move anymore, let alone cleave me. But to what do I die the most? Yeah, to cleaves. It's just not right. But yeah, welcome to RuneScape everybody. Anyway, I've talked about Araxi and that's pretty much the only thing I'm going to do about Araxi in this episode. Because in this episode, it's all about the Vic. So I'm trying to get as many credits as possible from Vic and I'm going to start at Cabbage Face Punch Bonanza because here I can get bonus XP in both Farming and Slayer and I'm just going to try to get enough bonus XP for 200 credits. After doing some calculations it turns out that I need 4k renown for Farming and 2.7k renown for Slayer so obviously I'm going to do Slayer first. A nice thing to know about Cabbage Face Punch Bonanza is that you get a certain amount of bonus renown per day. So that means that the points you get in that minigame are doubled, or something like that anyway. I believe you get about 500 bonus renown per day. So that means that I'll be doing this every single day. Of course I won't record everything, that would be rather boring. Cabbage Face Punch Bonanza is actually a pretty cool minigame. Well, if you're playing with a good team that is. Like this guy called Infinite GP. He knows how to play this game. Well, actually, there's not much to know. The only thing you should know is not to be a lone wolf. Which is surprisingly something that not many people understand. Anyway, this Infinite GP guy, he stayed together with me like all the rounds. And then we got to round 10. I guess he didn't know that he didn't need to cross to the other side anymore. So that's kind of a mistake by him, but yeah, okay. I totally forgive him after he played 9 brilliant rounds. And that just proves to the score. I got 173 points. And that is actually very nice. This also makes for a renown of over 300. So that is definitely very good for just 10 minutes. Or a bit more than 10 minutes. Another mini game that I'll be playing this week a lot is Barbarian Assault. So to get the 200 credits from agility, mining and fire making, I need 430k plus agility bonus XP, 400k plus mining XP and 490k plus fire making bonus XP. I know the numbers seem big but trust me, Barbarian Assault is actually very good bonus XP and I'm going to prove this right now. Well, it's only good bonus XP if you're playing with a great team. And that is what I'm doing right now. So I want to give a shout out to FFX, Mirror Link, Sword Slate 000 and Keystone. I myself am playing as an attacker and that is by far my favorite role. What can I say, I just like killing stuff. And let's be honest, it's not as hard as healing or being a defender. But it's no collector either. Oh yeah, and I'm not killing the king, so I'm just going to do round 1 to 9. And of course on hard mode. But I guess that speaks for itself. Since basically you can't find a normal mode team anymore. Or I would be very surprised if that was possible. Or well, I guess you can find a normal mode team, but not nearly as easy as a hard mode team. Anyway, that takes care of 9 rounds, and after those 9 rounds, I already have over 800k fire making bonus XP. And that's like what, 20-30 minutes, or maybe even less? So yeah, as I said, it's really 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 fast bonus XP. And I just needed 490k for uh, 200 points, so I went way over there. Let's just call it free credits. 
Like I said, I was playing with a very good team, so I did another 9 waves with them. But this time I chose for agility bonus XP. And I didn't get as much bonus XP as with fire making, just 309k this time. But still, it's insanely fast. I still have to do a few rounds to get those 200 credits though. I guess Jagex really wants me to train Fletching, because I just got my 4th item out of the Fletcher set. And that item is the Fletcher's Gloves. However, I would have preferred if Alice started giving me the rest of those Slayer Masks. I do find them more useful. Of course, 200 mil cash pile would be cool too. That's sadly not possible with the Red Gym though. Or however I should call that. But you guys are smart enough to know what I mean. Am I right? Of course I'm right, you're watching my videos! Two episodes ago I got two World Bearer Rings, and now I get another one. In that episode I called them a rare gift. Well, I think I have to review my opinion now. Then again, watch me not get one for another three months. Anyway, chest of the faraway place where things are kept, show me your content. A medium lamp? Seriously, getting a medium lamp from that chest is the same as getting Ebola. And if that's not worse enough, it's a runecrafting medium lamp. Man, it's like getting Ebola, but the Ebola itself has swine flu too. I mean, you're double fucked. Just like I am double fucked right now. So I'm going to destroy that lamp. The reason for that is because I don't want free XP and skills that I don't have 99 in yet. Or 120 when it comes to invention or divination. Time for more barbarian assault and I've landed in a great team again. So let me give a shout out to Bruce Banner, Kim Dongle, Soyu and Link of Time. Well, a player named Link of Time. And on the previous team there was a guy named Mirror Link. I definitely see Link. Sorry about that guys. Worst joke ever, am I right? If I told this to a person on nitrous oxide, I wonder if they would stop laughing. Or maybe it would kill them. Someone should conduct that experiment. Anyway, that's another quick tour done. And that leaves me with 440k bonus XP in mining, making me already reach that mining quota. And this is me doing wave 1 to 9 with the same brilliant team again. I mean, if they're awesome, why leave, am I right? Come to think of it, I haven't had to redo a wave yet, and that itself is very weird. Well, I guess it just proves how good this team is. This time I finished my agility goal, and not even barely. My goal was 430k, and I have almost 50% more. Well, those are free credits again. Man, it's so hard to find good players in Cabbage Face Punch Bonanza. It's so hard to find players who know how to play, but when you do find them, it shows on the points. Oh, it definitely shows on the points. Look at this, I got nearly 200 points, and I probably could have gotten it if I didn't forget to check which round it was. I thought it was round 9, so I crossed. Ah well, everyone makes mistakes, I guess. To get those 200 credits from Slayer at Victor Trader, I needed 2708 Renown at Cabbage Face Punch Bonanza. And, well, I have that now. Even way more than I needed. 2708 rewards me with 301k bonus XP in Slayer. And that is enough for 200 credits, as I already said. And after the exchange to credits, I still have 40 bonus XP left. So, my math was good here. And yes, it was very hard. Anyway, that takes care of Slayer for now, and the leftover renown from Cabbage Face Punch Bonanza will go into farming of course. When it comes to Barbarian Assault, I already have the 200 credits that I can get from all of the skills. But it was so easy and so fast to get that I decided to get an additional 200 credits. So in order to get a full 400 credits at Vic, I need around 1.5 million bonus XP in fire making, 1.3 million bonus XP in agility, and around 1.2 million bonus XP in mining. So far I've only had great teams and this one is another. So I feel like these people deserve a shout out too. These great people being Pink Floyd, SQRT1, Lyrebird, and Alk. And Alk is actually my friend. Now, you may be wondering, how do I get great teams like these? Well, the answer is simple. The BA Games French Chats. 
nearly every team that's formed there is great. So you can think of BA games being the opposite of Raids FC. And speaking about Raids, just as Araxi, I'm taking a break there. Anyway, that's 1.6 bonus XP in fire making. Again, I get way more than I need in just one trip. Well, I guess this perfectly demonstrates why I'm continuing to go for 400 credits. And that's 9 more waves with the same team. Yeah, I love these guys. And instead of fire making, I'm now putting my bonus XP towards mining. That puts me to 880k bonus XP, so to make it to 400 points, I need an additional 320k bonus XP. And as you all know, that'll be a piece of cake. That's another 9 waves done with pretty much the same team. Well, more or less the same team. A few people left and a few came, but the people who came are very good too. So let me give a final shout out. Zorat. W7, SQRT1, and Zanaris. Zanaris actually being the main account of I believe Liarbird. Now I've been playing quite a bit of Barbarian Assault this week and I still haven't died. That's actually very unusual. I haven't had this happen ever, especially as an attacker. Anyway, I know that I haven't finished getting bonus XP for mining yet, but I've rolled to agility for these 9 waves. Yeah, I'm going to switch between mining and agility every 9 waves. You know, just keeping it fresh. And I believe it's easier to record that way. Well, I don't want to record and having to change skills in between waves. There's just not enough time, and I prefer to line myself up correctly, to you know, make that first surge. Anyway, I now have 934k bonus XP in agility, that means I need about 250k more. I still need to do some cabbage face punch bonanza for farming. In order to get 200 credits at Vic store, I need 297k farming bonus XP. And to get that amount, I need 4069 renown. So that's definitely going to take a while. And during one of these games, I even got called an elitist. I mean, me, probably the most inefficient player in RS. I get called an elitist. And why did I get called that? Well, because I got angry at people who still didn't know how to play. After I explained it a thousand times, I constantly said stick together. And I repeated that so much. Yet still, they run around doing their own thing. I'm there just killing the monkeys. What do they do? They immediately cross to the other side. I mean, seriously, that affects my points too. But it was kind of funny. Oh, and it wasn't one of the players who's playing with me right now. They knew how to play, just look at the scores. It sucks that I didn't win though. Another place to get bonus XP is Heist. And don't worry, I didn't forget about that. There's just not much to record there. I mean, you basically just stand there. Yes, I'm playing with Heist for XP, so it's not properly playing. But let's be honest, Heist is a terrible minigame. Well, I don't like it, but I'm nearly at max point, so let's convert some of the points. And I'm distributing it evenly here, so that gives me 300 plus thieving bonus XP and 280k hunter bonus XP. So it doesn't turn out to be even. Even though I got less bonus XP in hunter, it somehow still rewards me with more credits. Well, I guess the conversion rates could have been a bit more balanced. Then again, I think Jagex holds more value to Hunter XP than to Thieving XP. I guess that's why the conversion rates aren't the same. For me it's kinda annoying, but I guess I'll have to deal with it. And when it comes to Hunter, I reached my 200 credits and even more. But for Thieving, not yet. At the moment, it's July 10th, and the news post about Vic the Trader says that trading and bonus XP lasts until July 11th. But whether that is the start of July 11th or the end, I have no idea. To find that answer, I've looked far and wide, but I couldn't find a solid answer anywhere. Some people say that today is the last day, other people say that tomorrow is the last day. Personally, I'm firmly convinced that tomorrow is the last day, because if I remember it correctly, it was like that in February as well. But it's better to be safe than sorry, I suppose, so I'm going to trade in my bonus XP right now. 840k mining bonus XP will be converted into 310 credits. For agility, it's 932k bonus XP that will be converted to 296 credits. 56 credits are earned from 169k thieving bonus XP. 
1.6 mil farming bonus XP is turned into 412 credits. And lastly, 187k bonus XP in farming rewards me with 126 credits. What my plan was for Victor Trader was to get that last law ethereal piece. And that'll cost me 600 credits. With those remaining credits, I would buy divination outfits. So I want an amount of credits that is dividable by 500 after extracting 600. So with the amount of credits that I have right now, it would be ideal to have 2600 credits. In order to get those 2600 credits, I still need 258 more. And where can I get them? Well, from summoning. I have a lot of bonus XP in summoning actually. Almost 20 million. I'm not going to convert all of that to credits. I'm just going to look at this skill as an emergency. So anyway, that's 2600 credits. If somehow my instinct is correct and Victor Trader is still open tomorrow, well, to trade in bonus XP I mean, then I am going to continue grinding for bonus XP. And also, I won't be recording any of the mini games. I believe that will just take up way too much time. And I would really love to get an additional 500 credits maybe. If possible, even 1000. That would be ideal. So anyway, see you in the final wrap up. The ability to trade in bonus XP at Vic is almost over. So let's make the most use of that while I still can. And today I've played almost exclusively Barbarian Assault. Because that's where you get the most credits. Well, the fastest. And nearly all the teams I've played with today are exceptionally good. Well, in the end there was a team that wasn't so great. And after the final wave with that not so great team, some people actually called me an asshole because I told them how to play. And the worst part is, I barely said anything. People these days, well, taking noobs is still better than just standing there. And I won't be giving shoutouts to all the people I've played with because there are just too many. There's just one person who I want to give a shoutout to and that is Ahura. I think I've played around 70% of the games with him. And he's a great guy. He played very good. Another minigame I played is Cabbage Face Punch Bonanza. Well, obviously, because you get bonus points every day. So it would be stupid to at least not play that. Sadly, there weren't any great players today. So the points came in rather slow. And I wasn't even able to utilize all the bonus XP you get per day. So that's kind of a bummer, but yeah, whatever. At the heist, I also have a lot of win points left to cash in. And since I really want to get 500 credits or maybe 1k credits, I'm gonna need all the help I can get. So I'm definitely using those win points right now. In this week of Vic the Trader, there's still one minigame that I haven't mentioned yet, and that is Stealing Creation. Stealing Creation is also a great place to get bonus XP from, because you can get bonus XP and a whole plethora of skills. And since you know that trading in bonus XP for credits actually works with a prestige system, then you'll know that the more skills the better. The only downside to stealing creation is that it takes so much time to gather those points. So if you're only planning to grind bonus XP for a week, then stealing creation isn't really worth it. Then you're better off spending your time at Barbarian Assault. But from the last time, I still have some stealing creation points left. Not too much, just 200, but I'm going to put them in crafting. And I know I'm still not maxed in that skill, and putting bonus XP in that breaks my ideology a bit. But actually, the lower the level of that skill, the better the bonus XP to credit ratio is. And that is why I put bonus XP in crafting. Also, most of the bonus XP will be removed anyway, and what's left will be negligible. So it's not that bad that I put bonus XP in crafting. But now let's check out how much credits I'll gain from just one day. I got 1.7 mil bonus XP in mining and that gives me 266 credits. In agility I got 1.1 mil bonus XP and that gives me 158 credits. I only got 82 credits from thieving and that for 247k bonus XP. The 292k bonus XP that I put into crafting wasn't enough to get me 200 credits. I needed 5 credits more. The 2.4 mil bonus XP from fire making gives me 217 credits. The mere 47k bonus XP from farming gives me 32 credits. 
and that leaves me with 3593 credits. But as I said previously, I want a number that is dividable by 500 after 600 has been subtracted from it. So that means that now I want 3600 credits. Luckily I have my leftover bonus XP and that is good for those additional 7 credits. And so I basically got what I wanted. Okay, not as many points as last time, but then again I didn't have over 3k stealing creation points to burn. And when it comes to today's efforts, I got almost 1k credits. So I'm definitely very happy about that. And so you see what you have to do next time, and that is grinding Barbarian Assault a lot. Hell, Barbarian Assault could use some people too. You know, Vic the Trader store isn't going away today, so I'm going to buy the actual rewards tomorrow. I'm kinda sleepy now too, cause, you know, it's been a long day. Okay, let's finally use those 3600 credits. And the first 600 of those are going towards the Law Ethereal Hands. Obviously, because I've wanted this for so long. And that completes the full Infinity Ethereal sets. The remaining 3k points are going towards Divination Equipment. And I'm going to start with the Chronicle Outfit. Because I have the least amount of items of those. So that way, I'm more likely to get items that I'll be able to combine to make Elder Equipment. So for example, if I were to get a Chronicle Head, then I would have 3 heads. Well... Not like the King Black Dragon, but you know what I mean. Three heads that I'll be able to combine into the Elder Heads. But I kinda thought that I had two Chronicle pieces, and it turns out that I have three. So that puts a stop to my plan. You know, I made that mistake because the Chronicle Hands kinda look purple, and I thought that was a part of the Energy Outfit, because that one looks purple. And yeah, I know, I should've read the names. It's stupid of me, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. I got a full basic set. And that's great already. To get the Elder Set, I just need the Divination Energy Chest and Hands. You know, I may go into TH Trade and trade a Memory Chest for Energy Hands or the Memory Hands for an Energy Chest. I'll probably go for that chest. Anyway, despite not having as many points as last time, I'm still very satisfied about how this event turned out. And of course I already explained why I don't have as many credits as last time. Also, since I'm maging at Araxi, my stock of air runes has been going down pretty fast. So to me that seems like a great opportunity to test my infinity ethereal sets. But I'm not going to do that just yet. I don't have time right now. It's the last day of the week and I still have to do my weeklies. Thanks a lot, Vic. Man, I better get something good. Well, I got something good from Vic already, but I had to work for that myself, and it was expensive. Anyway, let's check out that reward. Well, it's not sub 100k for once. In fact, it's over 200k. I'm gonna reroll it anyway, though. What? Are you serious? A Barrows die? Whoa, man, this is insane. I did not see this one coming. The value went up by 100,000%. Man, that is absolutely crazy. And this is actually the second Barrows die that I got in my 432 Elite Clues. I still can't believe this is happening. I guess this is what all these sub 100k rewards lately have been leading to. Those must have been loot sacrifices to the RN Goat. And now the RN Goat brings me a Barrows die. RN Jesus is officially dead for me. Hail to the RN Goat. Can I get a back to back Barrows die? Let's find out. Or am I too greedy to ask for that? Hmm, yeah, I think it is wrong to ask for another Barrows die. So you know what, bring on that blood die. Yeah, no die, I kind of expected as much. I guess I just have to make do with Ancient Van Braces. Sadly, I already have those. And the other rewards aren't that interesting either. This is the first time that I'm taking Durzak on in a week. And let's see if that break did any good. Because if you remember from last episode, the kills went absolutely terrible. So I'm hoping that this fight will be better and then this happens. The Jihadi picks come in and try to ruin our day. I wanted to use escape to get away from that because I knew I'd take a whole lot of damage and sadly I had lag against me too. Fortunately I survived this attack. Other people of my team weren't that lucky. The loss of those people, combined with the lag in this world, made the situation quite ominous. And I truly feared for the success of this kill. But I was wrong to worry. I survived the whole kill. And this kill actually went better than any kill of the previous episode. 
even with the revenge of the jihadi pigs. And even when that second pet wasn't properly lured, or tanked, whatever you want to call it. The initial reward deserves a reroll, and the reroll didn't get much better. Well, at least I survived this kill, that's something already. Spidey, I'm back. Mr. Pointy better be ready. Anyway, let's see if the positive RNG flow of that Barrow's die continues here. But when it comes to fighting itself, I don't have RNG on my side. A couple of fights ago, I already lost my sign of life. What exactly happened, I don't really remember. Because I was too busy hating the fact that I didn't have sound anymore. I swear, Jagex really needs to address this issue. It is annoying as hell. And it's not like losing sound in the Java client. There you could mess with some of the settings and your sound would be back. But in the NXT client, when your sound goes away, it stays away. And I'm seriously not in the mood to constantly restart my client. Especially not if I'm using an aura. So Jagex, please, no one gives a fuck about graphical glitches. Fix your sound right now. Anyway, this kill was pretty much fucked since the beginning. When moving from phase 1 to phase 2, it takes a while for the light to appear. And the light so happened to appear at the other side of the corridor. Or of the path, whatever. And I had to eat so very much, well, just like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that actually pissed me off so much. And it gave me a bad feeling that I would carry on for the rest of the kill. A bad feeling like I was gonna be sick. Well, just like watching this guy eat. <laughs> when I finally made it to phase 3 and Araxor decided to spawn spiders, I forgot about the mirror back spider. And this is pretty much what that bad feeling did to me. I wasn't hitting Araxor actually, he got damaged by corruption blasts, which of course was an attack from me, and that pretty much killed me. So yeah, in a way I did kill myself, and just like that fat guy is doing to himself. <laughs> So basically, my mirror back spider is his heart. So what I want to say is, eat healthy kids. Oh, and don't do drugs. Anyway, for today I'm just gonna call it quits. I got a mere 6 kills. And yeah, it's not much, but it's getting late too. And 6 kills, I kinda came from a 1 week break, so maybe that's a good warm up, I don't know. The loot from those 6 kills, that looks rather thin though. Unlike that guy. <coughs> <laughs> Only the syringe skills stand out here. I guess the cursed RNG Jesus was at work. And because of that death, I don't have to check how many days without dying I ended with last episode. So I can just put zero right away. And no, I didn't die on purpose just to be able to do that. I do still remember how many days I went without dying. But it was a pretty shameful amount too. Not as shameful as now though. So it does kinda suck to end this episode like this. But on the other hand, next episode I'll start with a clean slate. Now that Vic is out of the way, I'm going rock hard against Araxi again. Will the RN Goat reappear and bestow Mr. Pointy upon me? You'll see that in the next episode. And thank you all for watching you awesome people. Hit that thumbs up button to conjure the RN Goat. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe for more of these videos. And perhaps other videos too? If you have any suggestions regarding those, feel free to post them in the comments. Who knows, you may make an appearance in my next video.